I don't think of myself as like an influencer or anything like that, but Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people, even from high school, contact me and say like, how did you do it? How did you just pick up and leave? And honestly, like, just do it. You'll fit, you'll figure it out. Even if you don't have it all figured out by the time you get there, you'll figure it out along the way. Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. I have my good friend here. How's it going, man? Happy to be back. No, it shouldn't be about anything. Like this is one life. (laughs) One life? Like fucking do it. My guy. But she just got it. She totally understood it. 20 years old when I started just watching a lot of movies. How it, and it tells a story. I want to tell a story. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. You're another uh, childhood friend, someone I've known, uh, an old friend from the past. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. I know it's been forever since we've actually talked so yeah as you saw like with this podcast I had recently Jesse Bompiani who was another friend of ours uh, way back um, it's always great to like reconnect um, and you know kind of bring value to people's lives uh, through our stories um, part of the reason why I wanted to bring you on the podcast is because uh, just in your impressive journey um, seeing you um, venture off from your hometown of Vaughn, which is where I'm still from, <laughs> but you going to like Vancouver and, uh, kicking ass really like, uh, just absorbing, uh, what nature has to offer literally like, you know, taking photos, documenting, uh, your story, your journey along the way. And how has that been going for you? How, how has that experience been like? <laughs> it's been a crazy and wild one. Obviously I left at the height of COVID. So, uh, moving to a new city without knowing anybody was interesting to say the least. Um, I took on a job out there working for, um, an environmental not-for-profit doing like a clean ocean project. So that was quite fun and cool. Um, once that was done, I actually, I moved to Calgary and, uh, I'm just outside Calgary. I'm close to the mountains right now. Um, okay, just great. kind of exploring and figuring it out, but uh, pretty sure I'm moving to Costa Rica in June. So. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so you're just like on the go, whatever happens Always. kind of yeah, on the fly. That's amazing. And have you always been this character? Cause I, I remember you like that, but I don't at the same time. <laughs> I remember you very, yeah. being very reserved, you know what I mean? Like kind of in your own world or were you always had this like hunger, like to, you know, this curiosity for adventure. I think I had a curiosity for sure, but I think it kind of um, like came to light more so after working like the same nine to five every single day in Vaughn. I was doing the same thing. Right. Um, I had a thirst for adventure, but I had never really like fully indulged in it. So I decided to just go like gun ho and quit my job, sell everything and move out West just because I felt that that's what I needed. And now I just keep, <laughs> I feel like my mom says like, Oh, it's six months is up. Looks like it's time for you to move again because I feel like I move every six months. So. Yeah. And uh, is this because there's opportunities or you're just like fascinated with maybe the change of lifestyle, the new environments that you're kind of reside in? Both of both actually. So oh, okay. I've, I've been lucky with like getting opportunities. So mentioning moving to Costa Rica, there's actually a another not for profit that's doing a clean ocean project out there that I'm kind of trying to go see if I can help with and eventually get a full time position. And then yeah, I really what I love about traveling is just the culture and seeing new places and exploring new things. So half of it has to do with the people half of it has to do with the landscape. It's incredible to see like journeys from people around the world compared to like how we live here. It's, it's quite eye opening actually. So. Yeah, no, for sure. And I'm an advocate of traveling. I <laughs> joked around with a friend this morning, like haven't left my house probably since uh, the pandemic started, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been in Toronto <laughs> the whole time, um, probably because being scared for the reasons, you know, taking the, the right protocols, but at the same time, I just, who feels like going anywhere, right. When everyone's so cut off and, uh, with masks and mandates, political agendas, all these kinds of things are I, um, I rather go when things settle. Um, see, things seem to be settling now. I know there's a lot of protests and truck convoys and things like that happening in our neighborhood, <laughs> but, uh, I think th- things are turning up and, uh, yeah, for anyone that, uh, has been thinking of planning a trip or, uh, going to a destination, I've always been a person to encourage it. Funny enough, before the pandemic, I've always wanted for my dream, um, uh, partially, but to head to Los Angeles, California, um, and do like a coastline kind of trip. Um, and I was trying to do it with some buddies, didn't really work out. So I actually just went solo. And that's why, um, I kind of admire you so much because 
you're kind of doing your own thing. You know, you're going out there, um, making new friends, uh, making new contacts and seeing the world on your own, right. Uh, without any other external influences. And that kind of trip, uh, just brought me, uh, was just eye opening, you know, just made me in touch with who I am as a person, uh, my creativity and really my ambition and what I see myself for the future. Are these trips, um, doing the same for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely feel like they helped me with my own like personal um, self-development. Just um, it's, I think, incredibly eye-opening and also humbling to see how other people live around the world. Um, Also, just having, doing these things on your own, you have nobody, like you don't have any, um, anybody to rely on. Um, it's kind of like you're out there in the world by yourself in a completely different place with a foreign language and you just it kind of teach it like shows you that you can either like make it or break it in these situations um, I haven't been broken yet so right, right. we'll see um, I even though there have been some crazy uh, scares right because uh, we were trying to I should give the audience some context we were actually supposed to be doing this podcast roughly about a year ago yeah. And, you know, there was just so many things happening in your area, uh, like, what was it, forest fires, floodings, um, yeah. you know, even yourself. Uh, sorry to hear that. I'm so happy to see that you recovered, but you you broke, I believe, uh, one of your limbs. <laughs> was it your arm or your leg? <laughs> <laughs> I fractured my wrist, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, you fractured. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I'm saying, like, all these things are happening uh, in these crazy circumstances. So glad to see, obviously, you're better. But uh, tell us about that. Like, how did you cope with all these um scares uh yeah it was crazy I was actually moving across the country when the uh fires were happening so I was driving in the height of it there was one um night actually I decided to take off really late which wasn't very smart don't recommend it um (laughs) and (laughs) I'm driving through a valley and I see like basically a wildfire just um like take flight essentially Wow. right off the side of the highway and I just got through it right before they shut everything down like I was the last car through um it's wow. quite crazy I ended up yeah like I guess traveling's been great because I have friends kind of all over the place so I was able to stay with a friend in the area like in yeah. Penticton British Columbia but if I didn't I wouldn't know what I would have done that night so because they were just popping yeah. up everywhere it was crazy so well god bless thank you thank god yeah you made it out there <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um i was watching i was watching a movie the, the other night called only the brave uh have you watched okay. it yeah uh, as well like yeah it's with josh brolin and um taylor kitsch like all these actors basically uh it's about those forest fires um these uh i don't know nine twelve men um they kind of yeah that's they were firefighters right uh they went and they were called them hot shots hot shots and they would engage directly with the fires and just to see like the bravery um you know the how much they would like sacrifice, put their lives on the line um, with their job, right? And just like how much they um, have to risk uh, in the process, right? Um, But to to see like, and and to see yourself like there, to hear your story, I mean, like driving through, uh, you know, and seeing these these fires like up up close, up front, you know, we see it through social media and we are always like, you know, praying for the victims and things like that, especially what's going on with, you know, Ukraine and Russia and things like that. So, what an experience, right? What a story to tell, right, Stephanie? <laughs> like to, to go through that. Um, so is that the reason why you moved to Calgary? Uh, no. Was, no? Um, I ended up, I was searching for a way to um, make the life that I want to live easier. So okay. I owned a house in British Columbia and um, I ended up like doing all the research and flipping it myself. Um, so wow. renovating it and all that congrats. myself. Yeah, Thank congrats. You. Um, and I sold it and, um, not to brag, like, I just think this is awesome. What I was able to do, um, with the money that I made on the house, I was able to buy a place here mortgage free. So now I can just rent my place out and travel around the world because that's just a passive income for me on top of working online and all the other things that I do. So that's, that's smart entrepreneurship right there. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's the hustle. That's that's what it takes. That's what it takes. That's amazing. And you made it work for yourself. That's so important. You know, when I, when this pandemic started, I was trying to make, uh, you know, becoming a filmmaker work for me, right? How do I make an income through that? Or how can I think my biggest mission was how do I stay creative every day? You know what I mean? Without working a nine to five job. And yeah, I think the pandemic, you know, I know a lot of people might, uh, 
be uncomfortable me saying this, but it really did save me. Um, and I know it did save a lot of people as well, but in the essence of, you know, taking a break from the, the day-to-day grind and just reflecting on what you want to do, uh, how you want to approach it. And that's what led me into, you know, creating 94 productions, this podcast, and now editing, you know, online. Right. And like you said, creating like an income. So you're able to tackle and pursue other projects, um, that you're more passionate, passionate about, or maybe more in line with, uh, you know, what your heart desires. So that's really cool. And I want to get into now your career, uh, since you brought that up, uh, I introduced you as a photographer and environmentalist. Now, what, following your journey, I always saw you as a photographer, and then I saw you transition into um, being an activist for the environment. Um, first of all, were the, are these careers that I've introduced you as uh, correct? Are you still pursuing these careers or? Yeah. Um, yes. So I went to school for environmental technology and science. Um, that's always going to be near and dear to my heart. It's right. Why- trying to move to Costa Rica they have the world's most um they're like a mecca for biodiversity which is um where you would want to be as an environmentalist I did not know that <laughs> most people don't actually that's amazing yeah fun fact <laughs> yeah yeah fun fact yeah, of the day fun fact. No, that's, that's amazing I, and and you answered my my uh, eventual question of why would you want to move to Costa Rica but that's great yeah um and then photography like like you said you 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 kind of remembered me being reserved I was always kind of like that weird quiet kid a bit in high school um a little bit more reserved and I always felt photography as like an outlet um for creativity for myself because I am quite the creative individual so um I decided to just kind of merge the two so I like taking pictures of the landscapes and and um nature and that sort of thing and I figured why not just merge the two and and kind of use it as a platform and a tool to spread awareness and um teach people maybe about like even just that teaching you about Costa Rica and how it's like mecca for biodiversity like these are just little little things that I can share that people don't necessarily know and I figure yeah <laughs> no for sure yeah and your photography you know is, is is amazing um clearly you have a talent for that but what I love about it is like your unapologetic efforts you know toward like climate change, environmental activism, even your adventurous lifestyle. Um, and there's a lot of like these topics, like people, uh, they're mild, I, I would say that they're mildly discussed only because it's become a punchline, like climate change, we need to do something about it. But I don't feel like people actually like think about it or people at least, you know, to see you dedicate your whole page, um, someone that's not like an influencer or a celebrity, right? To, mm-hmm. you know, the environment and, you know, how important it is to take the certain measures uh, to improve it or fix it. Um, why are these matters so important to you? Like, why did you dedicate your career and the next so many years, uh, towards this subject? I mean, I just look at it as, you know, without the planet, without clean water, without like clean soil and fertile soil to grow our food, like we're screwed essentially, you know, money and all the other like Instagram followers and all that other, like, like non-important bullshit is what I'm going to call it. it yeah, yeah exactly it's just it doesn't actually matter in the grand scheme of things like we have to we're we have to basically act now to protect our planet just because um I'm sure you've seen it like scientists talking that we only have like another 30 years left and all of this and yeah it's something kind of yeah sorry yeah. it's kind of bleak but for sure yeah, I'm just trying to spread awareness and maybe even unapolog- unapologetically, but I'm trying to do it in maybe even like a, a um, lighter note because I know you, yeah. you're constantly, we see it constantly, like how we don't have time left and how we're all going to die. It's like, well, it's unapologetic in the sense that you're very, and that's how I remember you as as well. Like, even though you were very reserved, I never really thought you were like awkward or anything. It's just more like a very direct, you know what I mean? No bullshit kind of attitude. So when you post and your captions, it's very powerful moving stuff like poignant messaging, um, you know, basically saying, you know, if we don't fix this now, this will happen then, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, exactly. And I think it's important to have that kind of attitude because a lot of people diddle daddle. A lot of people are afraid to be that raw and um, kind of embrace that conviction and their beliefs. So I commend you on that. Uh, I think it's in, super important. I take it back to the way I look at climate change is back. What you were saying is that uh, if you don't, if the, health, if the planet's not healthy, all these other things that you take for granted won't, won't be uh, working out either. Right. Um, yeah. It's just like what's going on right in the other part of the world. Like 
if that breaks out and it's turned into world war three, <laughs> everything you, the petty things you worry about first world problems, as they say, like won't matter. Right. Exactly. Um, and it's kind of like goes back to, you know, your body, right? Like if you're not, uh, if you don't have health, right. If you don't, um, whether it's mental, whether it's physical, you're not able to, uh, do the things you desire. Right. Um, or do the things that, uh, you take that are, uh, take for granted. Right. So very important that, uh, you kind of like explore that subject. Uh, what are you involved right now? Cause you keep mentioning you're part of like some nonprofit organization. Uh, what's your task right now? That's like, um, designed to like better spread this message or something that you're doing to contribute to, uh, bringing awareness to climate change. Um, well, currently through my work, I actually, um, took a step back from the environmental, from working for not-for-profits. Unfortunately, there's a lot of greenwashing out there and that just doesn't right. align with what I want to be doing. So, mm -hmm. um, I decided to take a step back and recenter and refocus, um, so I started working for an appliance company, actually, oh, okay. um, and I'm on their sustainability team. So just to find other ways to like make um, their appliances, which is a daily household like thing that we use, um, just more efficient ways we can like cut like down. Like environmentally friendly? Like, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah eco-friendly. Exactly. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm on that. So that's like our new green initiative for that company. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. And then I just decided recently that I was, I, I was wanted a different adventure and I wanted to go and try and do this in a different country. So, um, posted online, I ended up, um, like getting in contact with a guy that is the director of a not-for-profit there. Um, okay, and we have been talking ever since I'm trying to help him um, with his clean ocean project and ecotourism ventures that he's trying to start over there. And um, he needs somebody kind of spreading the awareness on this side because he doesn't speak great English. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. You're like a spokesperson. You're an ambassador. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. And speaking of what you're doing uh, for this appliance company. So what did you go to school for again? I did you, are you some sort of engineer? Um, I went to school for environmental science and technology. So okay. Um, not, it's very broad. Like it was in the engineering wing, okay. but, um, so I can technically like finish, go back to school for another year and get an engineering degree, or you can go back to school and for, to get a BSc in environmental science. Oh, so okay. yeah, it's, it was kind of like bordering the two. It gave me I love it. Business. I love it because the people I talk, no, because the people I talk to, including myself, it's either business <laughs> or engineering or like the art, you know what I mean? Like they study philosophy, yeah. but environmental and, and the fact that you made it work for yourself, right? Because I ran into a lot of people back in Ryerson, no shame on them. You know, everyone's trying to figure out their way that they yeah. did study the environmental sciences, but I can't tell you where they are right now, but you're <laughs> actually like, no, I'm serious. You're actually like making it work for you. You know, I, I don't know. I really commend people like that, you know, thank you. That, okay. that uh, kind of because you you could tell it's not for the money, right? Like you're not doing it because no. oh, I need to keep busy. I need to do something. This is something that has always been close to your heart. Yeah. Would you say? Since a kid. Yeah. So. Yeah. Since a kid, since a kid, I was just going to ask, like, how long? Right. So and that's amazing. And you're right. This is a, a dire situation. Like I've, I follow it as best I can. And I read something I could be wrong where uh we need to like uh something something needs to take action in the next like eight years uh something to do with like fuel or figuring out like fossil fuel consumption because in the next eight years it's gonna like just it'll be the tipping point after yeah. that or like you said 30 years like all i know is that this century is like the defining century in terms of climate change right? yeah pretty much yeah it's like you gotta act now or we're pretty much screwed like it'll go to get to a point where it's irreversible so yeah that's what I heard. Exactly. And, and, and that's really is a scary thought because, you know, even if uh, you hear all these billionaires, they want to grand ambitions, going to Mars, all that. It's never <laughs> going to be earth. You know what I mean? Oh, maybe, exactly. maybe in five, 10,000 years with like, you know, great cutting edge CGI <laughs> graphic, I don't know, like visual <laughs> stimulations, but it'll never be like this planet, you know? So oh, and it's I like think we should. Yeah. No, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, those billionaires should be like, putting the money in our planet now that's how i see it but yeah you know. no there uh, people have a lot of <laughs> don't get the conspiracy theorists out there <laughs> a lot of people have opinions on that um and yeah oh, we can definitely uh, talk about that i have a few conspiracies myself but <laughs> hey if you if you love to talk about conspiracies my whole thing is like 
I always bring it back to movies. Like that's how helps me conceptualize what's going on, comprehend yeah. uh, like Elysium, right? So yeah. it's going to be something like that. You know, they, they claim to go to Mars because they want to expand the human race, but it's only the rich that are going to go, right? Exactly. Or only the elite or maybe bioengineered, you know, like specific kind of human. Um, yeah. And then the rest is all here to die. Not to be kind of depressing and sad, but <laughs> that's how I see it. Like the movie Elysium. You watched it, right? With Matt Damon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. how I envision it. How I but see what, do you, it. what are your constraints? Is that something along the lines? Same thing? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's, it's um, yeah, we're going to kind of create, almost create like a superior race and the rest of us are going to be left here not to be cynical or anything like that, but. I mean, Segregated culture, yeah. Exactly. Sure. It's kind of the way it's going to go. We're going to like suck this like planet of its resources and then go take off to another one leave you guys here to deal with the consequences and we'll be partying it up over here on mars yeah. and be fine it won't be so. as cute as wally with little robots <laughs> cleaning up the mess and we'll be on a big ship <laughs> it'll be like we can only fit 10 on this ship see ya <laughs> um well i really hope that doesn't happen in our lifetime because yeah, right I know. there's so many things i gotta do you know <laughs> so many things we gotta do yeah. uh but yeah so going back to you know and speaking of celebrating uh, life on earth um you've been really uh taking it to the extreme uh in a good way right uh capitalizing on it you again lead a, in a very adventurous lifestyle i see you mountain biking horseback riding snowboarding uh a lot of great things now are these things that you've always had like uh, always been a part of growing up or is this something that you've just said i want to do something different with my life i want to do something new uh or it's like a bucket list thing yeah how did, how did you get yeah Basically, it was, um, sorry to cut you off. I no, no worries. I just say, how'd you get involved? <laughs> it's Zoom sometimes there's a little bit of a glitch. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's been, I, I didn't do these things growing up. I had a very like outdoor, ex, like I had a lot of outdoor exposure growing up, which kind of gave me the like thirst for um, adventure, but right. I never mountain biked. I never um, like snowboarded. I horseback rode. But the other two were something that I was like gun ho on learning. I was going to learn no matter what. So last year when I first started learning how to snowboard, like really starting to learn, um, I cracked my tailbone and um, oh. fractured my wrist at the same time. I felt that because I bruised my, <laughs> I didn't crack it, God forbid, but I bruised my tailbone in hockey. It I, hurts. Know, I know. Yeah. 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 yeah I can only imagine. It, sucks so and I still snowboarded I still went out like the very yeah, next that's week. how I remember you as like you're, you're yeah. a kick-ass you, you, you would do it like yeah fuck it. like if it's if it's not missing it's good it's good <laughs> if it's still there Pretty much. Yeah, it'll heal you know what I mean <laughs> I don't even know how you did it to be honest but all I remember with uh injuring your tailbone is you can't sit anywhere you know how like you want to sit down like yeah. after a long day it's like damn I can't even sit down anymore you know no, no. and <laughs> even like stand. lying down hurts yeah exactly you got to yeah, stand yeah. everywhere it's yeah. awful. that's why snowboarding is perfect right you're always standing somewhat <laughs> well you, you think when you're learning you think well you think lot. yeah that, <laughs> me someone who hasn't snowboard you know i'm just imagining myself you know just cruising down you know those, stopping when i want you know what i mean not right, when the yeah. nature not when the the <laughs> snow snow banks want me to <laughs> um well that's well that's great like uh that you took the risk that you're taking the steps um there's a lot of things that I want to try that I haven't, you know, like skiing and snowboarding. I think that's why I bring it up is just seeing you do those kinds of things. It was really inspiring horseback riding too. Like, that's crazy. Like I'm, uh, I wouldn't even know like how, how to approach it. I find it very intimidating. I'm also very nervous. Like if I fall off the wrong way, but, uh, tell us about that. Like how, what made you get into horseback riding? Um, I think it was just like my love for animals as a kid. Like I was always pretty active, but I never found a sport that like I really enjoyed. And I thought, mm -hmm. um, like meshed well with my lifestyle. So, um, horses kind of mesh being really active. You have to be quite athletic to ride horses, despite what people think. And, oh yeah. Like your core, you know what I mean? Like your yeah, core muscles exactly. and like your legs have to be firm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. And so I just kind of meshed the two at like 16 um my parents helped me a bit but after that they were like you're on your own we don't really want to be around horses and I get it they're intimidating like I've broken my like foot and rib cage and a whole bunch of things being around horses just like just last. falling off like riding Not, I've oh. actually never fallen off I'm gonna touch wood right now oh yeah um, yeah I'll touch it for you too <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> yeah. um 
Uh, it's just been more from working around horses, like groundwork really? and some training. Yeah, I started. So training what they hit sports. you? Like the yeah, horses like will been, like bang into you? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, stepped on. Um, you can no. get kicked. Yeah. Really? Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So even like squished, like the way I cracked my rib cage was I was squished between a wall and a horse. So. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. No, a horse? Are you kidding me? It's like, it's like a truck. <laughs> like yeah, pretty, a, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. They're like, 1500 yeah. pounds so oh my god no I, the reason why i bring it up is because uh you know you watch movies you you look like i'm a fish like uh have an affinity for history storytelling right and yeah. you just see these these horse like these warriors on horseback and you read about them and like i saw a horse like i was in new york city at times square uh and the nypd they go on horseback you know for crowd control yes and just like walking up to it I was like, the fact that, like, I always put myself in other people's, like, the fact that they would fight these things, like, in full scale, like, wars. You know what I'm talking about? I know I'm going back, like, ancient times, but I'm just saying, like, do you know how intimidating that is? Like, the horse is, like, standing over you, 1,500 pounds, you know, is breaking your rib, rib cage just by stretching its arm, probably, or, or its leg, I should say. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I, I put, I'm weird like that. I just put myself in that shoes and I said, wow, like, this is insane um the, the horses so like again credit to you that you can you have the bravery to go on a horse uh and do horseback <laughs> riding i i would love to try uh so i would have to see who knows if i'll ever do but <laughs> maybe maybe should. one of my movies yeah i think i should yeah maybe i'll uh have a stuntman uh, teach me <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's great that's great to know um do you ever think of uh on that note do you ever think of getting a horse yourself once you get enough if you get enough money or if you're at that point I have. I've had a horse. Previously. Oh, you've had a horse already. Oh, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I, they're just, they're really expensive. So with horses. That's what I said with the money. Like uh, that's amazing yeah. that you could afford one. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was not that I could afford it. It was, I made it work. Oh, so. oh you, made, you just made it with like, it was a, it was like, I got to get this horse. Got it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Good for you. Yeah. Thanks. So with that, like it's kind of with horseback riding and with horses, it's either you're fully immersed in the world and the culture because having a horse is like a full time job almost. Yeah. Um, or you and enjoy it and, and enjoy it and appreciate it from afar. Like for me now, I just I ride other people's horses. I pay to do that kind of like lease like on a car you lease a horse right? Um, you rent it. Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I do that so I don't have to ha like uh, incur the full like financial responsibility. That's of smart. Yeah. Yeah. So then it still allows me to travel and stuff because you can't just like, I can't just move to Costa Rica with a horse and leave it here, you know? <laughs> and it's not like a dog you put in your, your purse, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you could ride around Costa Rica with a horse. <laughs> could, pretend, yeah. Save on, save on gas, save on cars, right? You could ride uh, down to Costa Rica oh on God, the horse. No, I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. I could just see the people like, the faces on, on the people in Vaughn, like seeing you ride around with a horse. Cause like for us, it's like so surreal. Like no one's, no one's horseback riding that I know of. No. And if, and if you are, I apologize and we'll get you on the podcast. to talk about <laughs> your experience. <laughs> but uh, that's great. That's great. I'm glad you had that experience. Uh, you know, owning a horse now you're leasing one. Um, and it hasn't discouraged you like these injuries, you know, a lot of people will get traumatized by those things, but you know, someone that's so, uh, in touch with the environment and animals, you realize it's not the animal, it's me <laughs> that yeah. got in the way, right? It's always me. <laughs> it's always, yeah, right? Like some people might take it to the extreme, uh, stupid horse, <laughs> but it shouldn't <laughs> be like that. <laughs> um, that's great. So going back to like the adventurous lifestyle and you like moving around, I am curious uh, because just like my dream, right? Uh, filmmaker, director, it's unconventional. And I was met with a lot of resistance. Uh, were you met with a lot of resistance from friends, from family? Did anyone give you problems? Honestly, my parents have been amazing in supporting me in everything that I want to do. So Great. I'm truly grateful and lucky to have them. They've always, like, they were the ones that pushed me out West first. I was nervous. They were like, go, oh, it's going to be amazing. Even though I didn't really have anything like set up, set in stone. Um, they've always been great like that, I, honestly. And, and I've chosen to surround myself with people that kind of have the same, um, views and goals. So I've, I've had a lot of support, but I typically find the resistance that I've, I've encountered has been through like strangers or people that don't really know me that well, <laughs> Wow. Okay. which has been, which I thought has been odd because it's like, 
you don't even know half of the situation or would have gone through like you don't know the past exactly. and yeah it's always been with um with strangers which I guess goes to show you like um people kind of project their fears onto you so oh 100 percent, yeah like they something that they can't do themselves they they look at you and say well how could you do it right um and they're also threatened by it right they they, they get even more anxiety as you prove them wrong right because yeah. they're saying it's a wake up call for themselves. Like, wow, it's not even that bad. I didn't even have the guts to do it myself. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's kind of how I interpreted it too. Like I haven't really like dealt with when I was growing up, like I didn't, uh, well, obviously we deal with like, you know, all kinds of different uh, remarks and, you know, judgment, but in terms of like my career, like no one like on the work itself has like attacked me per se, but the process or like just the notion of pursuing something that's so, as you know, from Vaughn, like out of the bubble, um was met with a lot of uh, skepticism and you know um those talks of we don't know we don't know what's going to happen like you just focus get a normal job you know um and i think it's that tenacity that uh prevails at the end of the day right like that tenacity in yourself you know i always used to say to people like as pretentious as a sound it's it's something that i hear uh commonly from a lot of uh celebrity figures or people i admire is only you, only you know if you're going to make it or not. You know what I mean? Exactly. You can't convince anyone else. Um, and that goes for you too, right? Like you moving to the West or you moving to Costa Rica, like no one's going to know what that means to you. No one's going to know how that's going to make you feel. No one knows how successful you're going to be. Only you know, because only you put, only you know how much time and effort and talent really you have and what you're contributing, right? Um, you know, someone, me, I'm empathetic. I kind of like listens to the person's story as I'm doing now. And I take the time to, see you know why you would make a decision like that but a person i'm telling you in passing would say well why are you moving there like what's the point like you know focus on your life here you have a good life here you know what i mean like they'd be like harsh about it and for me it's more like no but like as much as i make judgments only you would know um how you truly feel about that decision um and that's why you know this podcast the whole point of it is to like have people express their voice, you know, make it loud and clear, like content creators, creatives, anything like that. Um, you know, whatever you're, you're, whatever you're pursuing, uh, you need to kind of ignore uh, the voices from everyone else and just kind of believe in what you have to offer. Yeah, no, like, thank you for giving us the platform to actually speak on this, because I think that, you know, there's, there's so much fear and negativity already out there in the world. And it's like, you know, if, it, if this is important to you, and this is something that like, you just is right for you, then you'll make it work regardless of what other people say. Like I've moved 14 times in the last five years. Yeah. So. That's insane to me. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I moved two times from my bedroom to my bathroom. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Um, no. And, and, and that's what I meant by like admirable, right. It's uh, and that's, th that's another thing about this podcast, like this platform I've created is the whole mission I've had, um, you know, I tend to grow, uh, evolve like with any craft, but my sole reason for creating this is to bring on people that you don't really expect, you know what I mean? Like they're not influencers. They're not people that are like with millions of followers. They're people that, first of all, that mean something to me, you know, that been part of my life or part of my experience growing up, but also that are doing something that are, that's unique, right. And spreading a message that way. So I think that's really cool. Right. Um, because it gives it kind of gives it a relatable, vulnerable um, perspective, you know, of what's happening, exactly. um, you know, and someone listening to it, the whole point is there might be that one person that will listen to you, Stephanie, who's on the, on the fence of moving to Vancouver and saying, wow, like if she did it and then she searches up your profile and she checks it out, you know, it's like bringing those people, those, those uh, individuals that shaped us to shape them. So I think that's really cool. Um, the journey like you've experienced thus far. Uh, I'm really excited for what's to come after and yeah, yeah, no problem. And so like with social media, like, you know, it's benefited your cause to get people thinking more about like the health of the environment and the climate. Um, what about like photography? Like, are you using it as a tool still to help people become more inspired uh, for this cause? Yeah, definitely. I definitely try to, I try and take like, I, I try and I think, gauge um my photos with what I think people want to see yeah, so yeah. um a lot of my stuff if you look at it on my um Instagram it's it's like location and destination like photography in a sense 
um, like landscape photography, places that people can go and see. Um, I feel like that kind of click like gets almost like a clickbait in a sense gets you yeah, looking sure. at the photo and yeah. then if you read the caption it usually talk about something that's going on in the world and it, it helps that way I feel like if people can engage in something like you've you've got to engage people in something that they're interested in right like I could post a picture of a frog but not everybody cares about frogs but you know <laughs> yeah, I got so you. Like, my grandfather who was a hunter was <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, well, why not show you where you, like places in on the West Coast that you would probably love to see and then talk to you about like what's important and happening in that area. Right. So, yeah, very important. Yeah. And and I, I would encourage you, you know, as a creative myself, you know, to keep pumping out uh, those photographs. Really beautiful. Um, yeah. Is it something that you kind of like learned on the way? Like, did you did you have mentors around you that, that taught you? No, it's just all, all on your own. Self-taught. All self-taught. Wow, good for you. Good for you. The power of YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> come on we all use it <laughs> that's how I got my career <laughs> how do you edit a movie <laughs> oh man but it's true right it's, it's all about being resourceful at the end of the day like the fact that you uh managed to flip your own home um yeah. and then use the money to buy one uh in the place you are right now um that's a testament of being resourceful right yeah. um of using your surroundings uh, a lot of people including me like do not know where to start with regards to that you know but and even you you kind of again back to like uh who you are as a person like the bravery like to just say no i'm going to do something and i'm going to learn for myself and then i can apply that in the future like, that's yeah. really cool yeah exactly it's uh i mean like don't get me wrong i, I definitely get scared there's definitely moments where i'm like should i be doing this yeah, probably not yeah. but i'm gonna do it anyways for sure so, for sure well um, there, there's always the thing with you and that's why again, I, I bring people on the podcast is because I'm uh, genuinely curious about uh, why they make the decisions they make, right? Um, I wanted to know, because there are people, uh, I'm sure you know them, that they move for self-discovery, right? They yep. just want to figure their life out and they just move. You, there was actually a goal. There was an intention. Like there's a reason why, like Costa Rica, you know, the uh, biodiversity capital of the world, right? Like yeah. these are places that they're not, you throw up you know, a dart at the map. Um, and to me that for someone that is an advocate of, you know, goals and, uh, you know, having a vision admires, you know, because you need to have some sort of plan in life. Like I I'm, I'm a strong believer of faking it till you make it, but at the same time, really having, um, a strong plan, plan in yeah. mind. Does that make sense? Because yeah, totally. how else can you execute on what you want to do? Yeah. And like for the people that I think like people that just throw a dart at a map and go on a vacation or, or travel around the world for self-discovery, I say like, do it honestly, because, you know, you won't be able to actually sit down and create that plan until you figure out what you want for yourself. Um, so if, oh yeah, you know, for sure. Right. Like moving to a, a foreign country is going to help you get to where you need to be, then I'm all for it. Do it. So, yeah, at, at the end of the day, like, you know, there's, there's no judgment for me. It's just about like the fact that you have actually a plan of like why you're moving to these certain <laughs> cities. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. well, it, it feeds into your dreams and aspirations. There are people, yeah, for sure. Like, um, going back on what you said, I'm a, I'm a firm believer. I see it as like creativity. It's like writer's block, right? There's never going to be a good time to write something. There's never going to yes. be a good time to travel. Or reach a destination um and i think that's really important i think that was well said yeah for sure uh if there's something that you uh, a place that you wish to experience um especially now that things hopefully get better yeah go for it uh make your you know make it your make it your own and uh do the best you can with it for sure yeah it's just i say that because you know it's it's interesting um because i don't i don't think of myself as like an influencer or anything like that but mm -hmm. i've had a lot of people even from high school contact me and say like, how did you do it? How did you just pick up and leave? And honestly, like, just do it. You'll fit, you'll yeah. figure it out. Even if you don't have yeah. it all figured out by the time you get there, you'll figure it out along the way. So. Now, just a side note, did you, did you have the, like something, did you just move to Vancouver or like, was there like a job waiting for you? Uh, the first time there wasn't. Okay. Um, so I moved to Vancouver the first time and then, um, which was five years ago. And then the second time when I moved back, there was a job waiting for me. I planned that all out and figured Amazing. it out. Amazing. And the first time you went, do you, you were scouting, it was more for like yourself kind of thing. Like you were scouting it out. I was scouting it out to crew. move there. Actually, mm -hmm. that's 
a good story. It might help some people. I scouted sure. out to move there. Um, and I found a job in my field, which was awesome, which eventually led me to the job that I took like a couple years after. Um, but I was, I moved there on my own in hopes that my partner would follow me because they said that they would, um, and they never did. So I moved back home. Oh, wow. it was, yeah, it was like, a test. <laughs> they yeah, <failed. laughs> yeah, he feels. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he never followed me, and so I moved back home for him. And um, honestly, my advice is do what you need to do for yourself because obviously we're not together anymore and it was the best thing for both of us, but um, I definitely did not want to move back home. I was doing it for somebody else. And in a sense, I almost regretted it, but it was good because I don't think I was ready to move out completely out there completely yeah. yet. So everything um, happens yeah, for a reason, for sure. Yeah, exactly. So don't let people know. And, <laughs> yeah. And no, and that, and that goes back to my point, right. With the California trip, it's like um, I always had this notion that, you know, uh especially as a guy like oh boys trip like everyone go whatever but i didn't <laughs> i i hated the idea of waiting around like when are we gonna book the tickets and then i realized yeah it's gonna be scary on your on my own it was a two-week trip but at the end of the day it was uh one of the best things i ever did um it got me back in touch with like why i wanted to pursue filmmaking when i was a kid you know because i was in kind of out of touch with myself like around that time and um back to your point right it's like those trips those decisions you make make you realize um instead of like, what am I doing for the other person? What am I, what should I be doing for myself? Exactly. You know? So I'm really happy you made that decision. And uh, I, I relate to you as well. That's why another reason why I brought you on the podcast is the whole mindset. I love, you know, where I'm from, you know, I have no disrespect, you know, Toronto represent, <laughs> but <laughs> I know what it's like to be in a bubble. I know what it's like to be around the same people that, you know, are either talking about real estate or bank. <laughs> right. So um, kudos to you. Thank you. You're killing it. Yeah. You're, you're uh, not living the normal life, which is what I love, which is what I advocate all the time. Um, and I'm proud to see uh, what you can accomplish. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. Same, same goes to you. Like the fact Thank you. that you've had all this same sort of like conviction as myself to just make it work for yourself because filmmaking is important to you. So Yes, yes, you have to you have to pursue the things that are close to your heart. Um, and that's kind of like the takeaway I got from you. Um, so I wish you like nothing but the best, a safe trip in Costa Rica. Is there a, a planned date? Like is it anytime soon? Uh June. Trying to go for June. Oh, perfect. So, okay. Summertime. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be extra hot there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh yeah, I'm sure it'll all work out. And I'm looking forward to definitely gotta take some uh, beautiful photos. Um, I will for sure. uh, uh, yeah document the event uh and post them uh so thank you so much Stephanie Coppola for coming on the podcast uh, sharing your story your journey um as a photographer as an environmentalist and um yeah we look forward to uh having you back on the podcast discussing more yeah. thanks so much Daniel I appreciate you having me on here yeah not a problem anyway take care thank you guys again for listening and we'll talk soon